Today, we're going to talk more about Moana. Hmm? What's that? I said I was going to talk spoilers about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's Reese TV. What up, YouTube? My name is Cherise. Welcome to Reese TV. Glad that you're here. And before I get further into this video, I just have to warn you that I just got over a cold. So if my voice tends to crack here and there, you've just been warned. Last week, I talked about the awesomeness about Moana. But what I didn't get to talk about, mainly because I had to edit it all out, and that was mainly because of a lot of mistakes I made, was the press that surrounded Moana. Most specifically, we're talking about the press that came for the Daily Beast. Now, for those who don't know, the Daily Beast is, I guess, a blog website. And they did their own review of Moana, and they entitled it, Finally, a Disney movie with a POC at its center, A Princess of Color. Now, as you can imagine, the internet blew up about this, mostly with pictures of Tiana from Princess and the Frog, Mulan, Pocahontas, Princess Jasmine, and even Lilo from Lilo and Stitch looking extra pissed. Now, for those who posted those pictures or even reposted those pictures, I hope you know that Lilo is not a princess, though just like Moana, she comes from Hawaiian origins. And I hope that you understand that Mulan is not a princess, though she is included in the Disney princesses, most likely as a diversity play. The argument that she is like a princess in her culture because she got flirty with Shang, who is like a prince in their culture, was blown out of the water in Mulan 2 when she had to escort the emperor's granddaughters to their husbands-to-be in order to bring peace between the two kingdoms. However, to this list of princesses of color, I would like to add Princess Keita of Atlantis, The Lost Empire. She was one of Disney's first princesses of color and one of the first Disney princesses that was totally kick ass. Yet she never went mainstream. Disney doesn't even include her in their Disney princess collection. What's up with that Disney? But I digress because the story about the Daily Beast headline does not stop there. After the uproar from the first headline, the Daily Beast changed its headline to a headline that was probably just as bad as the first. The headline now reads, The Revolutionary Moana, Disney's most unapologetically feminist princess yet. Now, of course, the Interhive was disturbed yet again, and in their protest, they reference yet again Mulan. Others reference Merida from Brave, Elsa from Frozen, and Vanellope from Wreck It Ralph. I'm not gonna lie here, I kind of forgot that Wreck It Ralph was a Disney movie. That movie was so anti Disney and yet so awesome. However, though the Daily Beast made another blunder with its headline, it didn't change this headline and there is no statement released as to why. My guess is that they finally said, frack it. I mean, due to the headlines, they probably got more visitors to their site than they've ever gotten before. I mean, they say that there's no such thing as bad publicity. If it ain't broke, why fix it? And from here, I would like to share what I thought was mutastic this week. YouTube released its annual YouTube Rewind this week. And I got to tell you that I absolutely love these videos. It gives you a look back in all the year's trends, whether you forgot them, didn't know about them, or tried to forget them. Also, I love seeing YouTube channels that I actively watch get recognized. Yes, of course, Lily Say, aka Superwoman, was showcased. She is like the Beyonce of YouTube. So, oh, oh God. And one of my lights decided to just become brighter. She is like the Beyonce of YouTube. So, of course, we're going to see her like every year. But I also saw Matt Pat from Film Slash Game Theory. And for the first time, I saw Andre the Black Nerd. For the first time in forever. When I saw him, I screamed in my very hoarse voice, Hey, it's Andre! My husband and I have followed his channel for at least four years. 
since my husband joined the army and we had to move away from all of our family and friends. Since then, Andre has been like that friend that we could always invite over and just geek out with. So on behalf of my family, I just wanted to say congratulations, Andre, for making it into YouTube Rewind and for being everyone's play cousin for the last 10 years. Also this week, we got a teaser trailer for Spider-Man Homecoming, which was probably the first teaser trailer that was actually a teaser trailer that I've ever seen. If you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say first teaser trailer, just compare this teaser trailer with the new Baywatch teaser trailer and you will know what I'm talking about. Then the following day, the official trailer premiered on Jimmy Kimmel and I have to tell you that I am excited. And though it seems like we're not getting another Uncle Ben tragic death scene, that one scene where Peter says, he doesn't let me do anything, he treats me like a kid. And then the next scene he's trying to prove himself makes me wonder if Tony Stark is the new Uncle Ben. Also this week, Jimmy Fallon debuted the new Nintendo Switch and Super Mario Run, the Mario Mobile game, and Miyamoto and The Roots teamed up to play the Super Mario theme song which I don't know about you, I thought was awesome. Screen Junkies did an honest trailer on Suicide Squad, which was life. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 released yet another teaser trailer. And with more Baby Groot. Aww, he's just so cute. The Mummy official trailer was released and it scares me a bit. Mainly because the new mummy is very reminiscent of the Enchantress from Suicide Squad. Also, no hate to Tom Cruise because I know that Tom Cruise is a good actor, but I feel like the mummy series belongs to Brandon Fraser. Much like how the Jason Bourne series belongs to Matt Damon. Remember that they tried to sneak Hawkeye in there and we were like, no, bring back Matt Damon. The War of the Planet of the Apes official trailer release, and I honestly don't care about this movie. I mean, I personally was okay with the Caesar backstory in the first prequel. Personally, that was all I needed. I didn't need more prequels, but that's just me. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. And the new Fast and the Furious teaser trailer came out, and by the time that this video is published, the actual official trailer will be released. So I will cover that next week. Now, before we end this video, I would like to talk about PewDiePie. PewDiePie is one of the most popular YouTubers, now with over 50 million subscribers. Now, he is not my cup of tea, but he is a big deal to the nerd community, mainly because he was one of the first gaming channels. Well, before he hit 50 million subs, he announced to YouTube that if he hits 50 million subs, he will delete his channel. The next day, if that long, the internets went wild. And true to his word, he deleted his channel. However, it was his secondary channel and not his main channel. And in his video, he explains his action saying, that was a joke. Oh, typical PewDiePie. You know, this video is actually a perfect example as to why I don't subscribe to his channel. Wait, let me correct that statement. Why I unsubscribe to his channel. Because I went there once for pointers as to how to grow my YouTube channel. And I just walked away with a headache. I found his content both obnoxious and confusing. Now, just because I don't like his channel, doesn't mean that you shouldn't like his channel. Different strokes for different folks. Now, it's not that I expected him to delete his channel. That would be stupid. And of all the things that I think of PewDiePie, I truly don't believe that he is stupid. But to the thousands of people who tuned in for the very first time, it was very confusing to see him delete his secondary channel, not knowing that that was his secondary channel. And it was obnoxious to say that it was just a joke. It was like, silly internet, tricks are for kids. But with that said, I applaud PewDiePie, not only for achieving 50 million subscribers and his continued success, 
but for making the best clickbait that anyone has ever seen.